double IPA style of beer. Now, a double IPA is a very American innovation. Um, in fact, it's, it's credited actually to Vinny, um, who is the head brewer and owner of Russian River Brewery. Um, the, the beer that's credited as starting the style is called Pliny the Elder, uh, which unfortunately is only available in three states in the United States. However, however, Vinny, if you're watching, 5660 West Cycle. Florida, Florida Avenue. So, uh, double IPA is essentially, um, it gets the name, it's derived from Imperial IPA. And Imperial IPA and double IPA are synonymous terms, okay? They mean the exact same thing. Uh, the term Imperial uh, comes from the Imperial Russian Stouts, uh, which if you've watched the video before, you know it comes from the Russian Empirical Court, uh, where uh, the brewers would brew beers of higher ABV. Um, so imperial means just higher ABV, and double means the same thing as imperial. So a double IPA is an IPA that's brewed to a higher ABV. Now, this is stone ruination, which clicks in at 8.2%, um, which is obviously higher than a regular standard American IPA. Um, tend, they tend to be very ultra hopped, super, super bitter. Um, the IBUs usually click in right about at 100 yeah, that's right. And because it's it, because it's an imperial, it needs to be a higher uh, a higher ABV. You've got to put some more malt in it to get to that higher ABV. Absolutely. And because you put more malt in it, well, because we like our hops, you've got to even increase the already pretty big uh, big abundance of hops in a regular IPA just to just to account for the malt. Now, once you do that, if you're stone, uh, you put in all those hops and then some. And then when you're done with that, if you're stone, you put in all those hops and then some, and then some more. Yep. Uh, stone is really the, the brewery that started, uh, arguably, but they arguably started the Hophead Revolution. Mm -hmm. So not only were they instrumental in the American craft beer industry uh, in its infantry stages, um, uh, infancy, excuse me, uh, they also helped to propel the hop part of that movement, too. Yeah, absolutely. They've utilized dry hopping for a number of years, which is now commonplace in the American That's true. Uh, yep. craft brewing industry. But they were really one of the pioneers of that. Um, and the dry hopping is really where you add hops post-fermentation, and it really adds a lot to the aroma of the beer. Um, now, this beer is uh, marketed in typical stone fashion. Uh, ruination uh, essentially describes what they attempt to do to your palate after you drink this beer. Um, it's so over hopped as, as and not over hopped, but so well hopped as Aaron mentioned, um, that it, it just, it's really an onslaught of, of bitterness, um, and, you know, tongue smackingly, uh, hoppy brew. That's, yeah, if you've ever heard the term West Coast IPA or East Coast IPA, a lot of that terminology started with breweries like Stone and like Sierra Nevada that really, really, um, helped define the style on on the West Coast, you know, all those rap wars they came out of out of the wars of IPA. Yeah, it was really all about hops. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, instead of let's drop the base, it used to be let's drop the hops. That's right. Yeah. All right. So we we pour this beer in. What a beautiful, almost a a nice tangerine, mm. uh, unfiltered, cloudy. Yeah, definitely cloudy. We've got some nice goldenrod uh, colors to it. It's um, kind of a nice orange, dull, imposing color. Despite it being light, it doesn't look very friendly. See, I feel like it looks kind of friendly. Uh, I don't know. Our friends differ, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, we've got the famous star stone gargoyle on there who de definitely doesn't look friendly. No. Now... The nose, definitely. <laughs> That's not friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of big, aggressive hops in this. Um, there is a, a big supportive malt backbone to it, as Aaron mentioned before. There has to be, yeah. In order to get the ABV up to the 8.2 that this beer clicks in at, uh, you really have to have a lot of malt um, to have the, the amount of fermentable sugars to get that ABV. So it does have a kind of a, a nice toasted bread caramel base, but it's just been beaten into the ground uh, by hops. I mean, it's it's really, really big. It, yeah, it's a little bit difficult for me to pick out what kind of hop. There's just so, it's just one big hop 
It's a hot bomb. It's uh, that's what it smells like. Anyway. It, it's it's a lot of grapefruit. It's pith, which is the the white that comes between the flesh and the rind of a citrus fruit. Um, it's a lot of grapefruit pith, some lemon pith, um, just pine and and resin and sap all sap, over this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready to taste? Oh, indeed. Yeah. If I could, if we could describe licking mm. tree sap, if mm. that would sound appealing, that's what this is, because that's what it's like in the best licking tree sap way possible. That's what this is like. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's resin and it's it's fresh and it's dank and it's uh, it's citrus and pine and fruit um, and just a touch of of toasted malt beneath it. Um, but I mean, it's 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 dominating and it's. There's such a long hang on this, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been talking here for a good 15 <laughs> seconds, and I can still feel it, you know, pounding my the back of yeah. my palate into submission. I mean, this is certainly not a beer for the novice beer drinker, that's yeah. for sure. It's a sipper, but it is, it's, it's very, very... I know we're talking how, how overly hot it is, but it still is balanced. Uh, it's, it's a quality-made beer, which is really hard to do. Because Stone, you know, Stone pretends all they do is throw as many hops into the tank as is uh, as they can. But it's really a, an exact science, and it's very hard to do a beer of, uh, of this caliber and of this weight. Sure, I mean, the, the the sheer amount of ingredients that go into it. Sure, yeah, and it's must got be a, amazing. It's got a really nice medium full mouth feel. It's not super heavy, but it's very dry mm-hmm. uh, and really really pungent. Yeah, it's like. Like I said before, licking tree sap. It's like in Jurassic Park when that mosquito falls onto that tree and that sap mm. comes over it. I wish I could just pull my glass under that. There you go. And that's probably what we would taste like. Jurassic IPA? I don't know. Oh, man. If there were some dinosaurs right now walking around, mm. it would be perfect. Now, this is a great beer to suggest for hopheads, okay? If you have a guest that comes in or a brew crew member that comes in that's really, really big into IPAs, um, this is absolutely an astounding beer to suggest for them. Now, I would not recommend this beer for somebody that's trying to work their way into hoppy styles of beer. It's very, very big, uh, very aggressive. Um, certainly, uh, you have to already love hops to be able to enjoy this beer. Yeah, it actually um, is rated over 100 IBU. IBU stands for International Bittering Units. Now, that's an actual scientific measurement. It's not a measurement of perceived bitterness because everyone's going to perceive or taste bitterness differently. Um, but it, that notwithstanding, it's over 100 IBU, which really, once you get over 100 or 105, the human palate cannot detect a whole lot of differences in the IBU. It's that... It's that hoppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very bitter, very long hang on this, um, really a lasting type of flavor. Um, but that being said, also an excellent, excellent beer. Now, um, this usually comes in at a little bit higher of a price point, um, simply because it's a big beer. There's a lot of ingredients that go into it. Um, but it's excellent, and, and fans of the style will have no hesitation in ordering and enjoying this beer. Yeah, yeah. So another another great beer from from Stone Brewing. That's right. Uh, you'll see it in a lot of brass taps. Maybe if not on draft, we will have it many times in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Comes in these twelve ounces. You can also get them in the in the big bombers. That's right. Uh, also, um, every year this started out actually as an anniversary mm-hmm. beer for Stone, and every year they do a little bit of a variation. They probably uh, mix up the different types of hops that are used. Sure. I know right now there's one that's Ruin mm-hmm. Ten, their tenth anniversary ruination, which is Excellent. I mean, this is uh, 100 IBU and 8.2 percent. That Ruin 10, I think, is 11, around 11. Uh, so it, it can go up from there. But this sure. is a just a, a, a great beer. Um, if you're really, really tired of of that enamel on your teeth, you need to get rid of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Which, of course, we are. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>